majority of our clients are from Las Palomas, but we also uh, have a lot of uh, clients that are working with another rental company such as Casaways or um, Kiboya or um, the other one is um, Racket Point Reservations and other other resources, yes. Yeah. Or it does rent on their own through the electronic platforms. We ask for our clients if they're renting on their own and they're a Mexican tax payer for us to file their taxes, we uh, request them to send the factura that uh, VRBO or Airbnb send, uh, sends to them through facturity so we can see the taxes, that, the total of the incomes that they have made and also the uh, taxes that VRBO or Airbnb had um, will hold from them. And also we had to file the difference in their behalf under the Mexican tax ID number. The in, um, sales tax is paid in a monthly basis, but the income tax is uh, paid annually. Yes, it's important for them to know in 2020, in June, uh, Mexico start, start regulating the uh, electronic platforms, which is uh, BRB or Airbnb, because a lot of people used to rent through them, but not paying taxes. So Mexico said, hey, um, you need to pay taxes because if people want to be as a Mexican taxpayer, they need to have their residency uh, status and also they need to have a Mexican tax ID, we call RFC. Uh, or like I said, they can also be like doing like blind taxation and let the platform will hold 100% of the taxes and pay them uh, to Mexican IRS. So there are two ways to be taxed, and you have to choose which one. The blind, blind, blind taxation, you don't have any deductions at all. You are taxed 16% the VAT, or EVA, we call, or and the 20% income tax, and the platform will, will, will hold those taxes and pay to Mexican IRS. Or um, you become a Mexican taxpayer, and you let the platform to withhold part of your taxes and then you are responsible for the other part. But in order for you to be able to deduct expenses, you had to make sure that the RBO, Airbnb sends you the factura and use that factura for you to uh, be able to withhold, or, I mean, to deduct the taxes that they already will hold. And also all your expenses you can deduct but those uh, expenses in order to be tax deductible needs to meet the requirements that Mexican IRS requires, such having um, all the bills under the name of the taxpayer, having the tax ID, so it has to be backed up with a Mexican legal factura to be write off. Otherwise, it cannot be uh, write off that expense. Well, in order for you to, you have to provide to your vendor your tax information. And nowadays, um, Mexican uh, SAT is requesting the people to provide the vendor the constancia de situación fiscal. So it means that you have to show them that you, your tax ID is current, it's active, and to see in what uh, kind of business you, you, are been, um, you are been taxed. Because all that information has to be in, in the uh, factura in order to be uh, tax deductible. But, but all of that goes to SAT. That's all directly reported to SAT. And then you also get a confirmation that it comes to a specific email at your business, personal That's address, correct. and that, that you get an actual re electronic receipt with all of your tax information on it. That's correct. And when you, when you prepare your taxes and you go into your account with, Mex with Mexican IRS, you will find out, you can withdraw all the, the facturas that you have because they are like you said, electronically. So even though you don't have it physical, you, you can have it uh, in electronically. Well, if you have a genetic RBC, you cannot deduct the expense, the, the expense. But if you have your Mexican tax ID from given by SAT, then you can write up the expense. One of the things that's important is that in order for you to have that expense be uh, deducted, you also need to be paid out of your Mexican bank accounts. So it's important when you have a business, you also have your Mexican tax ID and also have a, a business account in, in any of the Mexican banks. 
and we recommend our clients to have the PESO account and the dollar account. Uh, the reason is, you know, the fluctuation or the change of the uh, money exchange here in Mexico and how uh, the dollar can be very high and our PESO goes down all the time. Um, so you don't lose in the tax convert in the in the conversion of the of the money. I recommend any factura that is or any bill that is built in dollars pay with your dollar account and any bill or tax that is in pesos pay with your peso account this way you don't lose money on the uh, money exchange now what you're telling me it sounds like is that you can pay you can get, obtain a factura for both uh, payments that are made in us dollars and payments that are made in pesos if you have a dollar and peso account at a mexican bank that's correct uh, if your provider has to be uh, able to provide you the factura in dollars or in pesos, now, and so also the way that they are tax been taxed, that's correct. But uh, most of our clients are are with and resource like the HOAs or the rental companies. They do uh, issue the facturas in dollars, so not, it's not a big issue. So basically, you have to be careful if you don't want to pay a lot of taxes. Make sure that if you are using any any vendor, that they are able to provide you a factura, because unfortunately many are not able to, uh, and people also are afraid. Well, I'm going to pay them taxes. They will say plus IVA. Well, when you work with a client with a vendor, you always have to say to them first of all, I'm in the rental pool and I need to have a tax deduction factura. So they will give you the their estimation already including the tax.